hi everyone welcome to anu's classroom so we where we are in the process of understanding strategic management that is the course we are in right now so uh, we are currently understanding how we can formulate strategies we saw in the last video how to formulate business level strategies and uh, the michel porter's uh, what you can say classification of business level strategies into cost leadership differentiation and focus in this video we are taking our uh, discussion on formulation of strategy to one more level ahead that is competitive strategy formulation and in this video we will uh, talk about formulation of competitive strategies in different situations and also i hope to help you in uh, making you understand the different competitive moves that are taken by organizations to make its strategy effective and the different dimensions of competitive strategy as well by the end of this video i hope that you will be comfortable in uh, understanding or having a basic knowledge on the formulation of competitive strategy the framework for competitive analysis the various competitive moves dimensions of competitive strategy competitive strategy for fragmented industry emerging industry as well as declining industries so without uh, wasting much time let's get started formulation of competitive strategy any organization be it in any kind of an industry it has to have a competitive strategy we saw about uh, the what you can say we in the earlier videos we had seen a video on how horlix had defined its competitive strategy against uh, complan we have a lot of other players also like shima t and jayalakshmi versus kalyan silks uh, we have mcdonalds versus burger king we have domino's versus pizza hut a lot uh, lots and lots of examples you just need to look around you and you will definitely see competitive forces acting uh, not against each other we can say act, acting uh, with each other okay in order to maintain that competitive edge and not lose its market share at the same time get market share of others right it is kind of like uh, maybe playing kabaddi or something like that right so um the competitive strategy that an organization develops it may be explicit or implicit if it is explicit means it is developed through a planning process which takes into account the external environment and implicit implies that the uh, uh, strategy is developed through activities of different functional units or internal analysis and uh, or uh, the best approach would be uh, to uh, mix uh, what you can say a comb combination of both the explicit as well as implicit, implicit strategies and uh, so developing a competitive strategy is technically uh, what you can say it is a development of a formula for success and that formula should answer two questions first is what are the goals or the what you can say where does the organization wants to reach at the end of the strategy and next is what are the ways or policies that the organization paths the organization is willing to take in order to achieve those goals so the goals could be maybe expansion of the product line or expand into much more target markets maybe increase the sales distribution or purchasing power maybe they want to put in more effort into r and d that is research and development or maybe it is finance and control so whatever it is goals is where they have to reach right and then we have to discuss about the uh, or we have to think about how we can what are the ways with which uh, what are the ways we are comfortable in taking in order to achieve those goals like some ways which we can improve let's say the increase our sales may not be purely ethical so uh, is the com company willing to sacrifice its ethics and morals to achieve its goals that's a question which the organization has to answer right so that is uh, when that is what we talk about when we are thinking about the means or the paths or the policies that the organization is willing to take so when uh, formulating these competitive strategies we have to look at the four key factors which determine the capability of the organization to successfully achieve the goals which we saw in the wheel of competitive strategy and that is what is depicted in the left hand side so competitive strategy it has to consider the internal as well as external factors as well as the core values of the organization and the society will have an expectation out of such organizations like you think about tatas okay they are a corporate they have a lot of different 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 units under their wing uh, when you hear the name tatas there is a certain image that comes into your mind right so uh, there is a uh, like when a new tata let's say a uh, tata firm is coming up in your society uh, um, some some uh, business unit of tatas is getting set up in your uh, locality or there is some uh, uh, what you can say an organization is there which the tatas are involved means you hear the name tata there is a certain expectation that arises out of that name 
in the society right so that is the expectation of the society so the internal factors and the core values will determine your internal competitive strategies and the external factors and the external expectations of the society is what creates your external environment and based on your internal competitive strategy and your external environment is where you or how you decide upon um, what you can say the best means to achieve these goals uh, our organizational goals and uh, therefore the organization definitely has to take into consideration also these four factors in order to develop a realistic or a com uh, in order to develop a realistic strategy uh, against their competitors and it is very necessary also for the organization to test for consistency of the competitive strategy by taking into consideration the internal consistency the ex uh, the environmental fit the resource fit as well as implementation so when you talk about internal consistency you should make sure that your goals are realistic your key operating policies are in sync with the goals that is your core values are in sync with your goals your key operating policies are in sync with each other when you talk about environmental fit you must uh understand that you you should uh, make sure that capitalization of industry opportunity as per goals and policies are there the goals and policies uh deal with the industry threats timing of the goals and policies with respect to environmental changes should be appropriate like for example if you, you want to expand to other foreign markets but right now the foreign ex policy is not that great means you should delay your expansion goals a little bit more so that you can expand it when you are Uh, what you can say when the environment the political or the technological or the social cultural environment is a bit more favorable to you then goals and policies should also respond to societal uh, expectations talking about resources you must make sure that all your goals and policies match your available resources and they must also be adaptable to change because we never know what's going to happen tomorrow like when covid hit uh, the people whose strategies were not Uh, flexible enough to adapt to such a change and uh, where the ones to suffer maximum loss right we all know that and then comes the implementation well designed goals which can be implemented is our aim alignment of goals and policies with that of core values we said earlier sufficient managerial capability for effective implementation should also be there so that is the formulation of competitive strategy so now that we have learned how this uh, competitive strategy can be formulated after the formulation of such strategies the organization have to position its business in such a manner that the value proposition uh, that could arise out of this particular strategy's implementation is maximized right and competitor analysis is definitely one of the major components of strategy formulation so definitely we have to do competitor analysis there is no way out so when you talk about competitor analysis mainly we have to talk about four major components which have to be covered in competitor analysis one is our future goals second is current strategy our assumptions and capabilities the organization should analyze both the existing as well as potential competitors okay because uh, we never know at any point of time uh, previously uh, what you can say small organization may start becoming a threat to us and if that happens we should be able to adapt to it when you say future goals what you have to understand is that it is uh we have to not just uh, uh, evaluate our future goals but also try to get an insight into what the future goals of our competitors might be we have to predict the current financial position of the organization predict uh, the strategic moves of the competitors if they are not satisfied with their present position like for example um let's say uh, we are talking about horlicks and complan itself suppose say complan uh, what would complan do in order to get more sales or what would complan do in case their current strategy is failing what would complan do if i bring out the strategy and they find it out and then how would they respond all these things like you know it is kind of like an entire chess that is being played in the real world that is the best analogy you can think about when we are talking about business it is that is chess only predict the reaction of our competitors to external environment predict the reactions of all the strategic changes that could happen and then uh, since we are all predicting these things especially the future goals definitely it will come up come with a lot of assumptions like uh, competitors themselves may have certain assumptions based on which they are formulating their strategy we will have our own assumptions right so all these assumptions also come into picture then you have to think about the current strategy that is uh, what is the currently what is the strategy of competitors so at that time when horlix came out with that ad where uh, people are comparing horlix to complan if um, at that time uh, complan's strategy was to make sure that they create a product which is at par uh, or which has similar qualities which they can boast just like horlix 
but at, when they implemented the strategy what happened and they started eating up uh, horlicks's market share horlicks came up with a new cost differentiation strategy wherein they showed people that you can get horlicks which is similar to complan at a much lesser price and uh, thereby tried to gain back the uh, what you can say market share which they were losing to complan then comes capabilities that is uh, you can th- say the last component in our competitive analysis right now as we are discussing and it includes assessing the competitors strength as well as weakness which can be done using potter's five forces model which we had discussed in the previous videos so the capabilities will include all the core co- competencies of the organization and also the quick response capabilities the adaptability sustainability all these things will have to be considered and combining all these four elements competitors position as defensive or offensive we can judge and it will help the organization to predict what moves should be made by us or what moves uh, will be made by the competitors so just like a game of chess so once we have learned about competitive analysis next what we have to do is we need to uh, what you can say predict whether uh, the competitor is going to make an offensive move or a defensive move okay and this is basically due to the instability in the industry like uh, when horlicks came up with that ad after that ad what would complan do will they go for an offensive strategy or will they go for a defensive strategy and whichever strategy they pick how should horlicks respond to it all these things pre planned they have we have to do uh, then only we can arrive at a proper strategy otherwise we will be swept off the floor right and we might get hit we don't need that so competitive moves in uh, maybe mainly cooperative or I mean, non threatening moves or it could even be threatening moves so the cooperative or non threatening moves as the name suggests it is a moves which actually do not threaten competitors like improving the position of organization along with position of competitors also even if they are not at par so or like you know improving their own product quality that is um, what you can say that is non threatening or improving uh, the public uh, what you can say public image of that particular industry such things are non threatening and it might even af- uh, affect positively on the uh, what you can say competitors also uh threatening moves are those moves which may actually threaten the competitors of uh, and may predict or influence um, retaliation also for such moves and retaliation uh, in that case could either be fast or slow retaliations may be effective or ineffective all those things so threatening moves actually threaten uh, the market share or the you know the standing of all the other competitors and therefore definitely they would either try to retaliate or they would somehow they will definitely try to retaliate the like uh, and complan and uh, like horlicks are two such uh, what you can say companies that have openly retaliated and openly threatened each other multiple times so next let us discuss about the various dimensions of competitive strategy so each organization has its own competitive strategy but the main dimension is uh, what you can say uh, mainly specialization branding push versus pull distribution channel quality of product technological leadership vertical integration cost position service pricing policy leverage relationship between the strategic business unit and the parent organization such things so what is specialization specialization focuses the efforts of the organization in specializing uh, maybe the product line or market segmentation or uh, niche markets branding focuses on brand identification of the products from that of its competition push versus pull is a uh, pull is a dimension which focuses on the degree to which brand identification actually can be done so it may be uh, selling directly to a customer or through other distribution channels like online platforms and all push strategy involves actually pushing the product or brand to the target customer okay like uh, for example you can think about lics okay lic policies they uh, go for push strategies wherein the lic agents actually thrust policies onto you right Uh, definitely you will know what i'm saying lics uh, but uh, when you talk about pull strategy pull is actually attracting the interest of consumers towards that product or brand you think about it uh, you have a credit card of icici okay which is coupled with amazon pay you might get more benefits or non cost emis and stuff so naturally you are drawn towards getting a credit card right so they may not as aggressively uh, like you know go behind you try, uh, making you take a credit card uh, when you compare it with an lic agent right 
but um, sometimes what happens is that we are drawn to that product so that is pull okay lic's are push okay whereas if you yourself are drawn to that then that is a pull strategy distribution channels uh, we have to definitely we all know the importance of selecting proper distribution channels organizations have to decide which channel has to use like whether it should be a company owned should it be retail outlets should we go for online platforms or specialty outlets all those different different things come under distribution channel selection quality of products definitely it is very important if quality is not there then you will not be able to sustain in the market technology leadership it focuses on the degree to which an organization seeks leadership in technology vertical integration explains the degree to which organizations follows a forward and backward integration cost position is optimum utilization of cost service uh, is uh, what you can say service dimension is that dimension which gives the degree to which organization provides auxiliary services or ancillary services like uh, um door step delivery or maybe you know um, uh, no cost servicing things like that in house service network credit after sale service such things pricing policy again it is another important dimension and it describes the price position of organization leverage is the financial as well as operating leverage then uh, relationship between strategic business unit and parent organization is also a very important thing especially in terms of major conglomerates and uh, such things so now let us um, so as we are in the so as we are going through um, this course on strategic management if you like the way how our classes are going and if you have not yet done so please consider subscribing and sharing with your friends about us so that we can help many more people like you uh, to you know ace their concepts uh, so consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon it will definitely help me help you better so next let us see how we can uh, create competitive strategies uh, in case of fragmented industries and moving forward we'll also see how we can do it uh for declining as well as emerging industries so fragmented industries what do they what are they fragmented industries they comprise of organizations which do not have a significant market share but they can influence the industry strongly fragmented industries consist of a large number of small and medium sized organizations and the industries make the environment unique in the sense that they do not have market leaders and these industries can range from services retail and agriculture to very very creative businesses as well and for such industries when we are thinking about creating a competitive strategy we should think about also the possible hindrances for uh, creating strategies for them so first is don't aim for dominance if you are aiming for dominance it it's going to be a problem especially in fragmented industries the dearth of strategic discipline over centralization false assumptions and uh, reactions to new products are a few hindrances that could come up in our way while we are trying to create a strategy especially for fragmented industries so when we are trying to create a fragmented industry strategy we should uh, we can follow these five steps first and foremost conduct a thorough industry and competitive analysis identify the cause of fragmentation in the industry examine that cause predict the new structural equilibrium and cope with fragmentation so next let us look at um, how we can create a competitive strategy when uh, we are talking about emerging industries so um, when we are talking about emerging industries we should uh, consider the following strategic choices first and foremost is shaping industry structure then we have to talk about the externalities the changing role of supply chain the shift of mobility barriers the entry timing and tactical moves why because uh, when we talk about um, uh, strategies for emerging industries so emerging industries itself are those industries which are very new or relatively new or they might be reformed due to emergence of socio economic developments so the best example you can think of is uh, um, when we had the pandemic we have online it gave rise to new many many new ott streaming platforms social media platforms um then online gaming all such things right came up 
and the main features of such industry is that it uh, it did not have any specific rules of the game right especially like you can think of it as at the time when Wright brothers actually first invented the plane there were no rules as to uh, or there were no licenses for flying that plane right but now it's not the case because now we are established in the air so now we need regulations now we need licenses all those things we have commercialized it but at the time of emergence such uh, as much uh, what you can say regulations or uh, as much uh, uh, rules regulations and such stuff right uh, were not there so at that time it was an emerging industry so think like that okay um but definitely even in, if it is an emerging industry you need to have a strategy because if you don't have a strategy then you might not be successful and so depending upon the industry each of those industries may have their own structure but uh, there are uh, we can still find some common factors which uh, help to identify the industry in their emerging state of development like um, definitely if it is an emerging industry then you can understand it by noting its technological environment it will be highly uncertain their strategies will be uncertain there will be high volatility uh, and mostly there will be first time buyers there will be shorter time period subsidies will be there like for example solar power plants especially in kerala right now kcb is giving a lot of subsidies for uh, people to adopt or adapt to solar power systems right they're giving a lot of subsidies for us similarly when biogas plants uh, initially they came up uh, the government gave a lot of subsidies to install biogas plants in our homes so they were all emerging that is why so if you are getting a subsidy if the strategy is uncertain there is high volatility and if you guys are mainly uh, first time buyers of, of such technology there are not many people who have adopted then definitely it is a sign that the industry is emerging so naturally when we formulate competitive strategy you should understand that the organization uh, we are doing can actually give shape to the industry structure by actually setting the rules of the game because uh, if you are new entrant into a totally new industry if you are the uh, you know pioneers of that industry definitely you have a free playground to play and make the rules right if you are the one who has invented the game then you make the game's rules as well then um, the major strat another major strategic issue in such industries is the de dependence on external environment then organizations also should be ready for probable shift in the org orientation of its suppliers and distribution channels there could be a shift in mo mobility barriers like proprietary technology access to raw materials cost advantage due to experience curves risk all those things would be there so that was about uh, an emerging industries now what about the declining in, in uh, industries declining industries are those which have experienced complete decline in the sales for a considerable period of time right so you remember the product life cycle which we you might have learned in uh, uh, especially marketing management uh, and all so there we had uh, talked about the uh, life cycle for products similarly there is a life cycle for industries as well and every in industry from its time of introduction it slowly tries to go up the curve that is it tries to grow and then as it grows and expands it matures and it in the maturity stage it tries to maximize its time at the maturity stage so that it can get maximum profit and then slowly slowly any industry be it any organization will have a decline period and then as they decline they have to find ways to re-innovate reinvent themselves and get back into that uh, growth stage again or that maturity stage again right so similar to product life cycles we have organizational life cycles and right now we are going to talk about how we can deal with declining industries so um, decline for in an industry could be due to many reasons like maybe low economic growth or rapid cost inflation or rapid technological advancements like if you talk about the normal wire phones right now they are gone right that industry declined they that industry is no more not much uh, still there but uh, it's mainly there for in offices and such right but uh, commercially you think about it it's mainly everybody is right now using cell phones and that too smartphones not even the dial pad phones except for our grandmoms not many people even use dial phones which has a keypad so these declining industries they are characterized by low or declining market trends or markets trimming product line lack of research and development promotion policies won't be there so definitely it will lead to a reduce in competitions also uh, so the acceptable role for formulating a strategy in such declining industry is mainly to actually harvest the um, what you can say harvest uh, which the maximum cash flow from that business and then 
go for this investment so try to sell your products or try to get as much money or as much cash from that in, uh, investment as possible from your products and services as possible okay and then disinvest so that is one of the reasons why when technology gets outdated uh, you will see that it happens in the case of printers and all you will see massive sales everywhere right and then once that sale is over a new product will hit the market and you will start hearing that that company itself has shut down or maybe that company stopped or discontinued their product line okay but then you will realize oh my god that that product line itself is not there now i'm stuck with this product what would i do right so then what happens is that it actually is a very good tactic by the companies it will actually create a permanent market for a long time for the spare parts of these things especially since they've discontinued now spare parts becomes very tough to get and then they'll try to make maximum out of you by selling you those spare parts right so that is a that is what they do when it comes to decline stages that is what uh, they what they're trying to do is they're trying to maximize as much cash flow from that industry and then finally they will go and disinvest that they'll shut it down they'll sell everything off um so the determinants of competition in declining phase is actually mainly uncertainty the declining pattern the pockets of demand reasons of decline exit barriers rivals and volatility and the accepted role for formulating a strategy in decline uh, is as i said to get maximum cash flow and then go for disinvestment so uncertainty let us look at a few factors here uncertainty that is one of the major factors right uh, because it determines the degree uh, the degree of uncertainty which is perceived perceived by competitors about the demand is what uh, determines our strategy the most right so suppose if we are perceiving that even uh, if we are in the decline stage maybe even still our customers really want our products means we will try to sell off maximum when our competitors will also do so those are uh, what you can say in some of the determinants so um, what are some of the strategic alternatives that we can take up when our organization is in its decline stage for that we need to understand the industry environment as we said we need to understand the uh, whether it is uh, what is the uncertainty involved what is the pattern involved what are the demands involved why there is a reason actually what is the reason for decline is it because of some hostility towards the company policy or is it some hostility due, uh, towards the product due to some pestle factors what is it what is exactly the reason for decline mm, are there any exit barriers like uh, um, which may force the organization to keep competing even in the declining industry or any volatility in the rivals like there is any sales decline and then um, is there any price warfare something like that is there or not so all these things we have to consider in order to create such strategic alternatives uh, so whether our market position is it strong or weak whether our industry environment is it hospitable or inhospitable if it is hospitable and we have a strong market position then we can go for leadership or niche um, strategy uh, wherein we are trying to be the leader in terms of market share uh, but if our market position is weak and but still our industry environment is hospitable then definitely we should go for harvesting that is getting maximum out of our um, products and services and then going for or either we can go for quick divestment that is we sell our products uh, or we sell it off for uh, whatever money we get that is quick disinvestment because even still the still the what you can say industry environment is hospitable means we can still be able to get a good uh, uh, fair amount of price while we are disinvesting but if our industry environment is inhospitable and our market position is weak then don't stay for harvesting definitely as early as possible sell it off and get out of there but if uh, at the same time if it is inhospitable uh, but the market position is very strong then you can either go for the niche that is define or create a strong position in the specific segment or go for harvest that is take advantage of the strengths and manage the controlled disinvestment to get maximum benefit out of it okay so those are the few strategic alternatives that we can follow when we are going through a decline phase so we have come to the end of this video i hope uh, uh, at the end of this video we uh, you are much more aware of the various competitive strategies and the competitive moves that organizations may take and you have a general awareness of when you uh, are in charge of creating strategic Uh, plans or strategic management of an organization you are better equipped in identifying the competitors and formulating a strategy which is apt for your organization if you did uh, if you found this video helpful consider giving us a like 
uh, subscribe to our channel share us share about us amongst your friends help us reach more audience it would be very much appreciated that is all that i ask from you in return thank you very much uh, until we see in the next video bye bye